Hello dear engineers and scientists. Today we are going to see several examples of uh, motion in one and more dimensions. But first let's remember what we did in the last movie. The general formula for motion, we have displacement, which is the change in position. The average velocity is the ratio of displacement to the time it takes for the displacement to occur. Instantaneous velocity is the change, little change in position divided by the little time that takes place or derivative of displacement with respect to time, which is equal to the derivative of uh, position with respect to time. Average acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the time for the change and instantaneous velocity, similarly derivative. The inverse of these is that integral of acceleration gives me the change in velocity and the integral of velocity gives me the displacement. Please note that the integration variable and integral limit are not the same. And this time where we want to find the velocity is the integral limit and not the integration variable. Our the constant acceleration motion where A is constant, we have Velocity v0 plus at, displacement v0 t plus at square over 2, and v square minus v0 square 2 a dot, please note this is dot product. Uniform circular motion where angular speed omega is constant and period is 2 pi over omega is given by the angle is theta equals omega t, then the position is radius times cosine omega t times i in the x direction, sine omega t j in y direction. Velocity is derivative of this. Uh, the, from the derivative of cosine omega t, I get an extra omega, and acceleration is the derivative of that. Please note that Velocity is perpendicular to position and to acceleration, and acceleration is radially inward, means it is centripetal, there is no centrifugal ac uh, acceleration. And the relation between velocity and acceleration is acceleration, that centripetal acceleration is v square over r. Our first example is projectile motion. Of course, what is uh, 2D motion without the famous A. Katish problem? And in this case, our projectile motion problem has a kid on a balcony. Uh, the height is H from his hand to the ground. Uh, he's throwing a snowball, it's winter, and the snowball has initial velocity V0 at an angle theta with the horizontal. Of course, gravity is g. Uh, we want to find what is the position of the snowball at any given time t. Uh, when does it fall? Where does it fall? What is the range of the snowball? And we want to check our results for the two cases where h is 0. Uh, that is, he is doing a, throwing this thing on a flat ground, and h is v square over 2. Uh, he is on top of a skyscraper, top floor of a skyscraper. Okay, so the x component of the position is there is no acceleration in this direction, and the sp x component of the velocity is v0 cos sine theta, so it's this. For y component, the initially we are starting from uh, y equals h plus uh, speed v0 sine theta times d, and gravitational acceleration is of course minus, meaning it is downward. 
we must now find when it falls down. Well, when it falls, the y components of its position is 0, and we call this time the big T. Then I have 0 equals y, this. And solving for T, I get v0 sine theta plus v square root v0 square sine square theta plus 2gh divided by g. Now, please note that I have actually two roots here. The uh, root that I am interested in is the positive root. The negative root corresponds to uh, what would have happened if this motion had taken place before t equals 0. So it's not re relevant for us. We take the plus root. Uh, the range of the snowball is flight time that we found here, multiplied by the x component of its speed, which is uh, v0 times cosine theta, and substituting, we get that. If h is 0, that is the spatial case when the trajectory motion, uh, projectile motion, is in a flat ground. We have this term disappearing and we recover the uh, famous formula for the uh, projectile motion. That's the a Cartesian range formula. If h is very much larger than v0 square over g, that is the kid is throwing the snowball from the top floors of a skyscraper, then the range is v0 cosine theta, the horizontal speed, times the flight time. And flight time is square root of 2h over g. Uh, if you compare the what is the, should be theta before the maximum range, you can see that if the building is very high, he should throw it horizontally. And if it is on uh, flat ground, he should be throwing it at 45 degrees because sine 2 theta should be 90. Our next example is uniform circular motion where our particle is doing moving on a circle of radius r equals 2 meters with the constant speed of 6 meters per second. In this case, the angular speed is v over r, 3 second to the minus 1. Please note that its unit is just 1 over seconds. And the period is 2 pi over omega, where pi is 3, so it is approximately 2 seconds. And we are asked to find position, velocity, and acceleration as functions of time. Uh, displacement and average velocity in the first second. Velocity at the end of uh, at t equals one second, and average acceleration in the first second, and acceleration at t equals one second. The position at a given time is given by r cosine theta in the x direction and sine theta in the y direction. And sub putting in the numbers, we get 2 meters times cosine uh, 3t over per second, i plus sine 3t per second j. Please note this second here. Uh, the time is in seconds, so we have to divide it by second uh, to get a dimensionless number. And omega is 3 per second, so 3 per second times time is dimensionless. The velocity is derivative of the position, and when I uh, take the derivative, I get an extra omega here, r omega minus sine omega t i plus cosine omega t j, substituting the values, 6 meters per second, minus sine 3 t per second i, cosine 3 t per second j. Please note that this is perpendicular to the position vector. 
the acceleration is the derivative of velocity and minus r omega squared cosine omega t i sine omega t j. Again, substituting numbers, its magnitude is 18 meters per second square, and its direction is radially inward. Uh, its components same as the radius except for the minus sign. At t equals one second, uh, theta is three radians. We can take it as pi because we are assuming that pi is three. So position is two meters cosine pi i sine pi j and sine pi is zero cosine pi minus one. So two meters times minus i displacement two meters times minus i minus two meters times plus i four meters times minus i. Average velocity, this displacement divided by the one second, four meters per second in the minus i direction. If you look at the velocity at this particular time, we will see that at this point, velocity is downward. Initially, it was upward. And its magnitude is always six meters per second. So velocity at one second is six meters per second in the minus j direction. Note that the magnitudes and directions of the average velocity and instantaneous velocity are both different. The average acceleration in this interval, zero to one second, is found by subtracting the initial velocity from the velocity at one second and dividing by the length of the interval, one second. Six meters per second in the minus j direction, our current velocity, minus six meters per second in the plus j direction, our initial velocity divided by one second, and it gives me 12 meters per second square, and the direction of the average acceleration is downward. If you want to look at the acceleration at one second, it is now radially inward. It is always centripetal, and its magnitude is v square over r, so 18 meters per second square in plus i direction. Please again note that the magnitudes and directions of instantaneous and average accelerations are not the same. Our third example today is on relative motion. We are going to deal with an elevator. There is an observer inside the elevator, observer E, and a stationary observer S. The elevator is one of those uh, glass sided elevators that you find in shopping centers so that both observers are seeing what's going on. The height of the elevator H is 2.4 meters and at T equals zero, elevator is moving upward with three meters per second. Its bottom from the ground is eight meters. And just at this moment, a screw comes loose at the ceiling and falls. So we are going to investigate this story. OK, the things we have to look at are, first, what is the acceleration of the screw according to observer E? According to S, it is obvious it is g in the downward direction, but about E. Now, our formula for relative motion says that relative acceleration is the acceleration in the stationary frame minus the acceleration of the observer. So, and of course, in the stationary frame, it is g in the minus j direction, uh, minus a, it is accelerating upwards, so it's plus j, and this is 10, this is two meters per second square, and acceleration uh, uh, relative to observer e is uh, 12 meters per second square in the minus j direction. In the elevator frame, it falls from the ceiling and to the floor, so the distance it falls is clearly h. 
and that is 2.4 meters. Now, how long it will take? We will use the uh, formula for accelerated motion. H is half a relative, please note, a relative t square. That's two, and t square is 2h over a plus g, and 0.4 seconds square gives us t approximately 0.63 seconds. In the frame of the stationary observer, uh, we will again look at how long it will take to fall. Now, we must uh, first investigate what does it mean to fall. Well, when the screw hits the floor, the altitude of the floor of the elevator and the altitude of the screw are the same. So we are going to equate these. The altitude of the ele elevator is y0 plus v0 t plus 1 over 2 a t square as the elevator is accelerating upward with a. And the uh, screw v0 y0 plus h, it is starting from up here, so y0 plus h plus v0 t, it also has the same initial speed, but its acceleration is downward g, not upward a. So from here we will solve for t. Please note that y0 terms cancel out, v0 t terms cancel out, and we are left with after the cancellations, I have a t squared over 2 is equal to h minus g t squared over 2. Isolating t squared, I have 2 h uh, over a plus g, which is exactly the same as the relation I had for the observer e. Therefore, the result is the same, t equals 0 0.63 seconds. This shows that the flight time is uh, same for both the accelerated moving observer and the stationary observer. The displacement of the bolt in the stationary frame is V0t minus 1 over 2 gt square times j. The motion is in the vertical direction. Putting in the numbers, I get this time is 0 0.63 seconds, so uh, it moves up 1.89 meters due to V0t and down 2 meters due to gravitational acceleration. So the net displacement is 0 0.11 meters, just 11 centimeters in the minus j direction. So uh, if you look at it, the film in the Earth uh, stationary thing. Final situation is this. The screw has landed and it is uh, near where it was uh, when it start left the uh, ceiling. Our next example is concerns the annual swimming race across Bosphorus that the municipality holds. A swimmer who is participating uh, has a sp swimming speed of 0 0.5 meters per second. Now, this is not a very uh, world-class athlete. He would do 100 meters in about 200 seconds or three minutes, which is about what I would do. But uh, actual swimmers would do it in 50 seconds or so. so he is going to try swim across, but he will, uh, as he is swimming across, the current is pushing him uh, downstream, and he will not get across from right across where he started, but further downstream. And actually, these races start uh, at Beikos and end in uh, Kurucheshme, and there is a, a sizable downstream drift during the race also. Okay, so our first question is, when does he reach across? For that, 
we want to find what is his relative speed with respect to the ground. And to do that, we add the, his speed with respect to water to the speed of the current. Please note that his speed with respect to water in this case is in the J direction. He's swimming straight across. And the current is in the I direction. So the time for crossing the straits is only related with this velocity. The time it took him to cross can be calculated from uh, looking at the width of the straight is the speed times time. So time is width divided by the speed, 1,000 meters by half meter per second, that is 2,000 seconds or 33 minutes. He will complete the race in 33 minutes. The distance he will drift during these 2,000 seconds can be calculated by multiplying that period with the speed of the current which is causing him to drift, 2 meters per second times 2,000 seconds, and 4 kilometers. So uh, to, while he is crossing the Bosphorus, which is 1 kilometer wide, he will drift downstream by 4 kilometers. Now there is a motorboat. Uh, it is also going to cross the straits. It has a speed with respect to water of 4 meters per second or 8 knots. And uh, the question is, if we want to, boat wants to go straight across, what must be the heading angle, theta? So it must head somewhat upstream that the drift speed due to the current and the component of its speed upstream will cancel each other and it will go straight across. Okay, and its speed with respect to the shore is speed with respect to water times sine theta times minus i. Note that downstream direction is plus x, so upstream direction is minus x. And its speed with respect to water, cos theta times j, that's what is going to carry it, plus the current speed, which is in the plus x direction. Now, uh, we want the x component of its speed with respect to uh, the shore to be zero for it to go straight across. And that means is speed with respect to water times sine theta minus the current speed must be zero. So the angle theta is the uh, sine of the angle theta is the speed of the current divided by the speed of the water and that's 0 0.5. So the angle is 30 degrees, which means it has to head 30 degrees upstream for it to uh, go straight across. To find the time the boat takes across the uh, straits, we must uh, have the width of the stream equal to the y component of the relative velocity of the boat with respect to shore uh, times time, and uh, that is 1,000 meters divided by the speed of the boat, 4 meters per second times cosine theta. The sine theta component is uh, beating against the current cosine theta component, carrying it across. And uh, so it will be uh, 500 divided by root 3 seconds, approximately 5 minutes. Please note that our swimmer could never cross straight across the straits because his speed is less than the speed of the current so that no component of this can be as large as the current. So he had to swim straight across and come across wherever uh, he could manage, whereas the boat could head upstream and go straight across. Ladies and gentlemen, you have seen several examples on motion, but please note that this is not enough. Uh, you have to solve problems on your own. 
looking at how I solve the problems is not going to help you unless you can solve by yourself. And to do that, choose several problems from book and solve them. If you cannot, take them to a faculty member and solve it with his or her help. And then, uh, if you have needed that, solve a similar problem by yourself. Uh, it will take some time, but the effort will pay off. Thank you for listening.